Bananas are radioactive, just like everything else around us, however bananas are known for the relatively high potassium content. Some of the potassium they contain is not the stable potassium 39 isotope, but rather the radioactive potassium 40. With a half-life of about 1 billion years, it's responsible for half of the 9000 decays that occur in the human body naturally every second. Today I will be extracting this potassium from the bananas. As for equipment we'll need some filtering tools, spoons, spatulas, a scale and a muffle furnace. Such as a gamma detector and a hot plate could also be useful. In terms of chemicals we'll just need 4 bananas. Each banana weighs 121 grams. So the total weight is about 490 grams. If you dry all four of them in the sun over the weekend, they will reduce into a mush weighing only 129 grams. This mush will be divided into portions of 15 to 35 grams. Each portion will be placed in a muffle furnace at 800 degrees C for at least 45 minutes. You might ask why not all at once? I don't want flames coming out of the furnace, okay? The total ash weighs now only 2.5 grams. The ash will be washed and filtered in the hopes that the filtrate contains all of the potassium as dissolved potassium carbonate. Potassium carbonate was formerly known as pot ash. So it's in the name of the compound that you can obtain it by incinerating plants. After allowing it to evaporate for several hours, you will have crystals with a high potassium carbonate content, which in turn naturally contains a significant amount of potassium-40. Before encountering any further losses, the entire beaker will be placed in the gamma detector. Now that the laboratory work is done, you can take off your lab coat and measure yourself for radioactive contamination. After 30 minutes, you will have a spectrum. You can clearly see two peaks. How do you interpret them? I would suggest that any nuclear chemistry enthusiast downloads the app called Isotope Browser. There you can see that potassium-40 has a gamma line at 1460 kiloelectron volts, which corresponds to the right peak. But what about the left one? That's really interesting. It's cesium-137 with a gamma energy of 600. 161 kiloelectron volts. Unlike potassium-40, cesium-137 is not a naturally occurring isotope with a billion year long half-life, but rather it's the product of nuclear weapon testing and the nuclear disasters that have happened in the recent years. Cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. It's likely got absorbed by the bananas, mistaking it for potassium in the soil. It's not contamination in the detector or the glass since I measured them separately beforehand. So in conclusion, you can clearly see that bananas contain potassium-40 and even trace amounts of season 137. There will be an upcoming video next week where I go into further details of how much of each radioisotope is in these bananas. With that being said, the experiment was a success. So goodbye!